Welcome to His Glory Nation, where we bring you the word of His glory. We do it through our His Glory Creed. Number one, the Bible is the literal and infallible word of God. Number two, my house shall be called a house of prayer. Number three, we're led by the Holy Spirit and the gifts of the Spirit. Number four, we have the Father's heart for the lost, the poor, the elderly, the widow, and the orphans. Number five, we're here to serve Him in ministry. Number six, in everything we do, we glorify our Lord. It is our love for Him that compels us. And number seven, the five-fold ministry. According to Ephesians 4.9, the apostles, the prophets, the evangelists, and the pastors, and the teachers. Visit us today at www.hisglory.me. We want to welcome all of His Glory Nation from east to west to north to south as we bring you a daily bread. Today's daily bread will invite the Holy Spirit to come down to be our true teacher in the living word of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Uh, We're going to get into uh, the the, uh, epistle of James today and a little bit of Genesis 1 and 1-2. So it is about pride promotes strife, and we know where pride came in. Genesis 1, in the beginning Elohim created the heavens and the earth. Something major happened between Genesis 1 and 1-2. And that was the fall of Satan. He was taken out of heaven. As Jesus tells us in the Gospels, I saw Satan thrown from heaven. The Apostle Paul tells us that all things were created through who? Christ. So in verse 1-2 in Genesis, the earth was without form and void, and darkness was on the face of the deep. And the spirit of Elohim was hovering over the face of the waters. That's where we start to see the separation between the dark and and the light. It was not a good time at Genesis 1-2. Let's see what the Lord tells us in the, in the epistle of James. Where do wars and fights come from among you? Do they not come from your desires for pleasure, for war that you remember? Why do we go to war? Why have there been wars year in and year out? It's about pride, power, greed, more. You lust and do not have. You murder and covet and cannot obtain. You fight and war, yet you do not have because you do not ask. You're not asking with the heart of Christ. You see, we're in a war today for the salvation of the country of the United States of America. We're at, we're, we're at a war in the world with many, many things and strife and pride and lust and power. It's exactly what James is talking about here. This is a spiritual war. We need to stand up in his namesake. You ask and you do not receive because you ask amiss that you may spend it upon your pleasures. When you pray to the Lord, you're asking for your pleasures. You don't ask for your pleasures. God is not putting us in this uh, this life for our pleasures. We ask for his purpose and his glory to be fulfilled across the world. And that is what true life in boot camp is all about, to know his will. He goes on to say, adulterers and adulteresses, you do not know that friendship with the world is eminent with God. So if you're a friend and you're in love with the world, the world self, the, the, the beast system, and you're living for the world, not in the world, but living for the world and in the world with the world. You're against the Lord because God is telling you that what is the difference is light and dark. You have to choose. Whoever therefore wants to be a friend of the world makes himself an enemy of God. You cannot love the world and God as well. Or do you think the scripture says in vain, the spirit who dwells in us yearns jealously, but he gives more grace. Therefore, he says, God resisted the proud but gives grace to the humble. So true. God resists the proud and gives grace to the humble. That is the biggest factor that the Lord is working on us in our wilderness period. When he's molding us, he's shaping us. He is the potter, we are the clay. He's getting that leaven out of the bread. It's the pride. Leaven in in the bread was always an idiom, is an idiom throughout the scripture. That pride puffs up, the yeast puffs up in the bread. And if the pride and the sin lets go, it spreads throughout the loaf. As what he's telling us, God resists the proud because pride is about you. It's what you think you can do instead of giving it up for his purpose and his glory. That's what threw Satan out of heaven. But gives grace to the humble. Grace comes to those who humble themselves and bow to his glory. Humility cures worldliness. Therefore, submit to God, resist, resist the devil, and he will flee, flee from you. There should be a little clause in this the sentence of the Bible. He'll flee for you for the season, but he will come back again. That's why we have to have the full armor of God, the five defensive weapons, the two offensive weapons, the word, the sword, and praying in the spirit, the carpet bombing of the enemy. Draw near to God and he will draw near to you. That's so simple. 
But what we don't do that. If we draw near to God, and how do we draw near to God? At getting in his word. Once you get into his word and you open it up with your heart, he will open it up and he will touch you in the heart. That's how we grow near to him. Cleanse your hands, you sinners, and purify your hearts, you double-minded. Lament and mourn and weep. Today is the ninth of Av as we lament, mourn, and weep. The uh, most unholiest days on the Hebrew calendar, the two days that the actual uh, was ransacking of the, of the city of Jerusalem and the, uh, the, the tabernacle. Let your laughter be turned into mourning and your joy into gloom. Uh, humble yourself in the sight of the Lord and he will lift you up. If you humble yourself and get down on your knees and he sees it in your heart, he will lift you up. He is the one that lifts us up. and We bow to him and only him. Do not judge a brother. Do not speak evil of one another, brethren. He who speaks evil of a brother and judges his brother speaks evil of the law and the judges of the law. But if you judge the law, you are not a doer of the law, but a judge. There is one lawgiver who is able to save, save and destroy. Who are you to be a judge of another? So we only judge, we can't judge the condition of someone's heart. We don't judge somebody. People always ask us, well, well some places the Bible says you can judge, and some places it says you cannot judge. It's very simple. When the judgment, if somebody is sinning inside the church against God's precepts and commandments, we are as the church to do it in a loving manner and set them on the right path. But we're not to judge the content of the context or the condition of one's heart. We can be fruit inspectors, but we can't judge them. Do not boast about tomorrow. Come now and you say today or tomorrow we will go to do such and such city, spend a year there, buy and sell and make a profit. Whereas you do not know what will happen tomorrow. For what is your life, even as a vapor that appears for a little time and then vanishes away? We can't, we, it's like you have to make your yes, yes, your no, no. It kind of contradicts the world in your corporate planning as a cor former director of three Fortune 100 companies. We're always planning. We always had a plan A, plan B, plan C, a 30 day plan, a 60 day plan, a 90 day plan, a one year, a three year, a five year, a 10 year plan. But God is saying, no, 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 you trust in me and I will provide tomorrow for you because we can't plan ahead of what God wants us to do. We just give him every ounce of us each day. Instead, you ought to say, if the Lord wills, we shall live and do this and that. It's about his will. But now you boast in your arrogance and all such boasting is evil. We can't boast in our arrogance. Pride, pride is the hardest thing to overcome. Pride is the, is the last, usually the last that and money because money can go into pride as well. Uh, the last obstacle for God to be able to use his first purpose and his glory because God cannot use the pride. Pride, 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 pride is what has to come down. We have to be humble. It's his glory, not our glory. And that's the thing that we always have to remember. We do it for him and we do it because we're servants that love him with all our heart, our soul, and our mind, not for any vain reasons. One of the 10 commandments, thou shalt not use the Lord's name in vain. It's not a vocabulary word. It's how we treat him in ambassadorship. Are we doing it for vanity? Are we doing it for our own self-pride? Are we doing it for money? Are we doing it for image? Are we doing it from our own glory? Or do we give it all to the glory of God? We have to be humble. And that's what he's looking for. Humble. Humility. A humbled servant. That's why we're called bond servants. We choose to serve the Lord. Therefore, to him who knows to do good and does not do it, to him is a sin. If you know it's to do good and you know do it, it is a sin. If you know it is to do good and it's God's precepts and commandments, we are to walk forward hand in hand for his purpose and his glory. We pray that James 4 has been a blessing to you in this daily bread. Go in his shalom today. God bless you.